The North American Lobster is now a staple of high-end restaurants in the great cities around the world and is a cultural icon in the Maritimes and in New England. But this was not always the case. At one time, lobster was considered a pauper's food, something that people were embarrassed to be seen eating because it showed that they were poor. It was a food that was fed to prisoners and slaves, and it was used as fertilizers in fields and fed to pigs. At one point, servants would stipulate in their contracts that they could not be fed lobster, just to have to avoid eating the hated crustacean. You're listening to Backyard History, the hidden stories that happened in your own backyard. The podcast version of the weekly history column running in newspapers across the Maritimes with your host and author, Andrew McLean. Before the arrival of Europeans in North America, indigenous peoples on the coast of what would later be called the Maritime Provinces in New England had stories of lobster being so abundant that after storms they would wash up on the shore in piles two feet tall. For them, lobster was a mainstay. It was a staple of their everyday diet, just like how Europeans saw bread and butter. One of their favorite ways to prepare lobster was to dig a sandy pit on a beach, to line it with stones and light a fire over them. Then they'd cover the hot rocks with wet seaweed and add layers of lobster, clams, often corn, and then cover them up with more seaweed. If this sounds familiar, it's likely reminding you of the New England clam bake, which was actually based on the much earlier indigenous techniques. When the European settlers arrived in North America, they found lobster so abundant that in order to catch some, all you had to do was wade into the water and grab them. In the early years of settlement, lobster became something of a staple food as it was easily accessible, abundant, and could also be dried to eat during the long, cold winters. However, the Europeans just simply didn't like lobster. Quite frankly, they hated lobster. There's a few reasons why, and most of them were rooted in prejudice from their home country. Back in Britain, by the time seafood made it to markets, it was often distinctly less than fresh. Also, in Britain, there were mandatory fishy days in which it was forbidden to eat meat that was not seafood, as the government was trying to save beef cows to feed its massive navy. And for settlers, seafood in general was associated with the barrels of heavily salted fish, which were barely inedible, which were already a substantial part of their diets. Europeans were, however, not unfamiliar with lobsters as they had their own back home. However, the types of lobster back in Europe were much smaller than the massive Homerus americanus with its enormous snapping claws, which we are familiar with today. The lobsters that the settlers first encountered were absolutely massive by today's standards. Some measured as much as six feet long. A Salem, Massachusetts reverend named Francis Higginson wrote in 1630 that it was not at all unusual to find a lobster that weighed 15 to 25 pounds. But he wrote that the size was not always a virtue and that those a foot long are better for serving at a table. There's an old saying that goes, familiarity breeds contempt. And this seems to be the main cause of the settler's scorn for lobster. Lobster were, simply put, everywhere on the coast off of Nova Scotia and New England. By the mid 1600s, lobster was simply a cheap and plentiful food to be fed to prisoners, to be fed to indentured servants, and to be fed to slaves. The lobster suffered the indignity of being fed to their pigs and being used as fertilizer for their fields. People living along the coast of the Maritimes and of New England were embarrassed to be seen eating what was considered poor people's foods like lobster and oysters. Their attitude only began to change because of one simple reason. Financial gain. While familiarity may have bred contempt for lobsters in North America, the novelty and the exoticism of the giant North American lobster and its huge snapping claws 
led to it becoming a considerable hit amongst wealthy upper-class elites in Britain, Italy, and most of all, in France. By the end of the 1700s, the lobster was a bona fide French culinary sensation amongst their elites and was served with fancy sauces with exotic toppings such as truffles or nutmeg imported from Indonesia. Special boats were invented by the Dutch called smacks, which had pools built into them that allowed seawater to circulate, permitting fresh lobsters to make it all the way to Europe. While in Europe, the cooking techniques tended to dress up and highlight the lobster, in North America, the goal was still to make it unrecognizable. Lobster would never be served whole on a plate like you'd see in a restaurant now. Rather, it would be stewed, deviled, made into sauces, and surprisingly frequently, turned into a salad. Lobster was still, however, only available in coastal regions in North America and to those wealthy European elites because storing and transporting fresh seafood was expensive and risky. By the mid-1800s, the population of big American cities like New York, Philadelphia, and Boston was growing immensely. And with that came smoke, grit, grime, and crime associated with industrialization. To escape the summer heat, a massive tourist industry of hotels and train lines along the coasts of Maine, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia sprang up. While enjoying the fresh air and the scenery in the Maritimes in New England, visitors also ate an astonishing amount of shellfish, clam bakes, lobster boils, and dinners by the sea. And now that they had experienced fresh lobster, they wanted to relive the experience back home in the big city. The final revolution that brought lobster into the mainstream began in the late 1700s due to Britain and France being locked into yet another war. Both sides found that they were actually losing more of their soldiers to malnutrition than to fighting. So France announced a prize for developing innovative ways of preserving food. So there was suddenly a surge in new techniques for bottling stews, meats, vegetables, and drinks, which would be packed into glass bottles and sealed with corks and wax. But then, the way people ate food and what they could experience in terms of food was completely revolutionized in 1810 when Peter Durand patented the tin can. It now became possible to preserve and transport large amounts of food safely all over the world. It was then that the demand for lobster really began to kick off. Hoops made from wheels with nets fastened around them became popular, if crude, lobster fishing traps. Now that the lobster could be preserved in cans and shipped everywhere, the industry took off on a whole other level, with mass fishing on an industrial scale and processing and canning plants being built all over the New England coast and throughout the maritime provinces. As an aside, Although the tin can was invented in 1810, the can opener was only invented in 1858. I suspect there was a lot of frustration as people employed knives, rocks, bayonets, hammers, and chisels to try and get at their dinner. The tasty innovation that is the lobster roll only arrived at the end of the Roaring Twenties. The story goes that in a seafood shack called Perry's in Milford, Connecticut, Harry Perry was confronted by a drunken salesman who demanded a hot grilled lobster sandwich that he could eat as he drove home while drunk. Harry Perry obliged, and while the customer was happy with it, Perry was not. The sandwich was soggy, it was kind of tasteless, and the lobster fell out all over the place. So. Perry enlisted a bakery called French's in nearby Bridgeport, Connecticut to make special buns for his lobster. And so the lobster roll was invented and it became a sensation all through the coast of New England and the maritime provinces. Despite all of these changes, for its part, the lobster itself has not changed. It's one of those few creatures who seems to be immune to evolution. Lobster fossils from 200 million years ago look basically the same as something brought out to you now on a steaming plate in a restaurant. But how people see the North American lobster has changed dramatically over the years, 
going from a pauper's food to a cultural icon. That was Backyard History with your host, Andrew McLean. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for another hidden story that happened in your own backyard. Produced by Jordan Lozier.